What's up guys? I'm going to unbox and review this HP Networking Instanon Access Point AP27. So this thing is designed for businesses to go outside and it can handle fairly extreme weathers, I would say. It's rated for minus 40 degrees Fahrenheit to 149 degrees Fahrenheit. So let's see what it comes with. I'm gonna, basically after I unbox it, I'm gonna install it. Then I'm gonna do some speed test uh, before and after installing this outside, just so you guys get a frame of reference. So we got some, we got a startup guide essentially. User guide, some info and stuff right here. And some more info in here, frequencies and everything. This is a Wi-Fi 6 access point. And then safety and compliance and some other info right here. So here we got the access point. I did cover up the serial number MAC address here as well as here. And this part feels like it's plastic and this part feels like it's metal. This part is also feels like it's metal. And the way you power this thing is over ethernet. So it's a PoE device power over ethernet. So you could power it via a PoE injector or a PoE switch. I happen to have a PoE switch, so that's how I'm gonna power this thing. The ethernet cable will go inside here, and this is our ground connector. And I'm going to use a quarter, because that's, that's typically the easiest way of opening these things. And so we're just gonna spin that around and open this up. And yeah, so it's just a straight up ethernet cable that goes in there, and again, it powers this thing. So we got the access point mount right here and it is metal as well, very, very strong. Then we have some screws. So this is to mount the access point to the mount and this is for the ground. This is essentially the weather seal for the ethernet connected device where you basically pass through the ethernet through here and then you essentially seal it up. So to run the ethernet cable, you open this up, you take this out, inside this is a two, well it's two pieces of rubber that open up like this, and this part becomes completely see-through. This is the side, this is the side that's going to screw in, so the ethernet's gonna go like that. So before we run the ethernet cable through, and I did tape up the ethernet just so the tap stays down, it makes life a little bit easier. It's not necessary, but it does make it easier. We've, we're first gonna run it through this, and this one you could see has these four little angles right here and so we're going to run it like that so that goes through then we're going to run this other piece and then before I put it in then I'll put this piece because once I put this piece it kind of doesn't want to move up and down and this is kind of what seals it so I'm just going to run this and then I'm going to go uh, plug in the ethernet screw this in then I'll put this in and uh, we'll go from there So the install was pretty straightforward. I screwed in the mounting back right onto the wall. I slid the access point, tightened it on both sides, so now the access point is secured. I ran an ethernet cable, which is providing both the data connection and the power. So it does have PoE, power of ethernet. It's hooked up to a PoE switch on the other side. And this is a class four PoE, so it's 30 watts of power. And my switch is providing that power. And then I also have an eight gauge grounded wire, which is being grounded directly to the conduit. So that protects against electrical surges. Now let's get to the app. So you set it up using the Roomba and Sinon, which is available both on the Play Store and in the App Store if you have an iPhone. So once you install that, this is what it looks like. And then you create, create networks out of it. And I've already created one for a guest network. And you know, you could basically well, let's just make a new one just to show you guys the difference. You can make one for employee and one for guest. And really the biggest difference is if you do a guest one, you can actually make a guest portal out of it where you can have them agree to some sort of terms and conditions, as you guys can see here. And you could customize this stuff. You can make the text, the top text, a different color. And so as 
you guys could see that's changing colors and stuff. You could reduce the size, increase the size. Basically, you get a lot of play. And with the text itself, you could do that. And then you could change the font there. And then you could change the other text to a different color as well. So you could basically get a lot of, um, well, some customization, I should say. And then if you go to more options, you could do specific network or you could basically do uh, same as local network, you could do bandwidth usage, you can limit that if you wanted to. You can restrict access to just the internet or you could do unrestricted where they can see stuff on the network. And then wireless options. This is really the, the main place where you could boost some speed. So if you have Wi-Fi 6 devices, you can enable this stuff and enable it. But the more you enable this stuff, the less um, compatibility you have. So it says some clients may not be compatible with this opt optimization. So just as a heads up. And then obviously the 2.4 and 5 gigahertz. And so let's just make a network. Let's call it HPE underscore Wi-Fi. And let's do a password of HPE. Just a very simple password that I would normally never use, but just for this demo, HP12345. So we click done. It applies the settings pretty quickly. So then you bring another device, refresh it, it sees HP Wi-Fi. So I'm gonna type in the password HPE12345, click OK. And then it's gonna to try to connect to it. And then once you connect, it takes you here and then you, you basically have to, you can't click accept until you click I agree. And then you click accept and now you actually have access to the internet. So it is pretty cool that you could do that. That's really the main differences between that. You can also see clients that are connected. And there's a few other things you could do in here. This is like how much of the internet it's, has been used and which categories and stuff like that as well. So there's a lot of customization you could do, but essentially the main pages are here. And then if you tap this, you could see how much has been transferred and which clients are connected. Then if you go back to the main page, you can click on health and you could see you pretty much the health if, if it goes down or if something happens, I'll let you know over here. So now for the moment of truth, I'm going to record the screen as well, just in case the camera loses focus on the, on the phone itself. So we're gonna do a before and after speed test. So I am currently connected to the access point, but I'm going to connect to the inside router first. So let's connect to the inside router and we're gonna run a speed test and then we're gonna do the same we're gonna to connect to the same server for the access point as well. So we're connected to GSL networks. So that's what I will connect to when I'm doing the speed test, when I'm connected to the access point. So the router is struggling to give me higher speeds here because it has to go through several walls to get here. So there are some obstructions in the way. The beauty of having an access point outside is that there's a lot less obstructions and this thing is designed to be outside. It could withstand temperatures of minus 40 degrees Fahrenheit all the way to 149 degrees Fahrenheit. And it's IP67 rated, which means it protects against dust and moisture. So now I'm gonna to connect to space whenever the SSID comes up. So connecting right here, and then we're gonna to go to speed test. Let's do test again. Okay, we're still connected to GSL networks, which is good. So it's an apples to apples comparison. And yeah, so we're getting much better speeds now, again, because there are no obstructions. And, and I mean, that's really kind of the beauty of having this thing. You can also connect up to 75 devices. And I mean, that's a recommendation, not a hard limit. Uh, but you know, if you have this outside, then, you know, let's say if you have a restaurant, I mean, this thing's amazing for businesses for it to be outside, whether it's in a parking lot, whether it's at a hotel pool, whether it's an outdoor dining area, if people are waiting for their food, for instance, they could connect to the internet and surf at much higher speeds.